Hello everyone, we continue our Tekken 8 prep with the most recently announced character, so welcome to our Lily Primer. Lily is a surprisingly strong fundamentals character with a sprinkle of back turn and crouch dash games. She has one of the best sidesteps in the game and strong punish tools to capitalize on mistakes. She doesn't have much of a grab game and lacks that scary, unseeable knockdown low that many characters have, but if you like the stick and move style with a bit of stance pressure and some gimmicks, then Lily is your gal. As with our other primers, this video should give you a good quick rundown on the character to jumpstart your learning and get you playing some matches. We will keep the technical lingo to a minimum, but you should still have some knowledge on basic standardized tech and terms, especially notations and terms for various game mechanics. In other words, this guide is meant for beginners, but you should already know a little bit about the game, just not necessarily the character. If you are brand new to Tekken, check out the resource links in the video description below. I've included several, including a system basics guide that operates as a tutorial for the whole game since Tekken doesn't really have that built in. To me, I think it's incredibly important to go over that before trying to tackle character specific guides. But enough of all that, let's begin. Let's kick off Lily with some neutral. She has some strong jab options. 1-2-3 is decent for interrupt, but unsafe. 1-2-4 can be floated or stepped, but it's a powerful mid. 2-4 and 2-3 are strong natural combos, and it should be noted her 2 jab is the same speed as her 1 jab. 2-4 is also safe on block, although it can be ducked. Her down forward 1 is a quick safe mid poke. It's generic, but very strong. She also has standing 3, back 1, and back 2-1 for similar mid poke purposes. Her toe kick has really good range, but she stands out in that she has three usable lows that give advantage on hit. Down three, down one, two, and forward, forward, four. The first two are fast enough that you shouldn't have to worry about people reacting to them, and forward, forward, four isn't too much slower, but you can also hide it a bit by doing a dash into other things. If you want to branch out from pokes, she has a bunch of safe, heavy hitting mids, including forward one plus two, forward four, down forward three, up back one, forward forward one plus two, forward forward three plus four, sidestep one plus two, and sidestep three. If you're willing to take on some block risk, you also have down forward two and her hop kick. Now keep in mind you'll want to experiment with the ones that you like the most because some will be better in certain situations than others. For example, forward forward one plus two is probably better for approach rather than at range zero, while forward four is a fan favorite since it's fast and rangy, but it also has poor tracking. Either way, the point is that you can run a really simple poke game with Lily and get really annoying with the lows, then start pounding away with the mids or use your advantage to nab some counter hits, which we'll talk about in the next section. However, beyond pokes, she she does have two stances you can play with. She has a full-fledged back turn game and a crouch dash or CD, which is simply a quarter circle forward motion. Her back turn is good for both mix-ups and counter hits or crushes. The scary low threat here is down three plus four. It's a little slow and unfortunately doesn't have a true mid mix-up option because nothing else in back turn is the same speed, but it high crushes, it's homing, and if you delay any of your faster mids just a little bit, that's normally enough to serve as a mix-up. Or you can just harass with the fast lows to force ducks, which are down three and down four. That said, the main mids are back turn two, back turn one plus two, and back turn hop kick. They're very good, only hop kick is unsafe, and two of them are launchers. Down three also has a second mid hit that does combo on counter hit, so that's an option too. Although you can enter back turn manually, note it's usually better to transition from a move because you'll get better pressure that way, especially if the transition move hits. Most common are down one two back, down four three plus four, back two one back, and four 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 back. Even on block, you can use your crushes to be aggressive. If you're your transition move does hit, note that she has a really strong splatting jab combo with back turn 1-4. It can be ducked on block, but it's very scary for opponents trying to challenge you. Now for crouch dash, it's a little different. There's no low, so it's not a mix-up machine. Instead, it's mostly an approach tool with a sprinkle of pressure. CD 1-2 is what you'll really lean on since it's a heavy mid-mid combo. Both hits are punishable on block, but you can confirm the first hit before committing to the second, and the second hit is more punishable. You can normally get away with this because the second hit gives a juggle on counter hit, so if they try to punish that first hit and you read it and finish the string, they're going to lose a bunch of their life bar. The other main tool is CD 3 plus Four. It's a high, but it's a very fast two hit move that does good damage on hit and gives significant advantage on block. So it's great for both pressure and stopping steppers. Now, I don't want to limit you to just two tools. So note that she has a fake crouch dash like some other characters, which is simply down, down forward. From here, you can do crouch moves. 
moves. There is one low, full crouch down for three. It's a bit slow, but it does high crush and it's a counter hit launcher, which thanks to its range makes it a good threat against opponents spamming highs. Otherwise, from crouch, you have a bunch of tools depending on your risk tolerance. For example, while standing four and while standing one are good for safe poking, while standing one, two and full crouch down forward one for heavier mid options, and then while standing two and while standing three for riskier launch options. But to simplify it a bit, getting things done from crouch dash and by extension full crouch really boils down to timing because you're either going to be hunting for a whiff at range or using the CD cancel from a transition. All you really need to know here is that during a transition, tapping up will cancel it and take you to a sidestep, which you can then cancel like normal to whatever else you want, including just a block or a back dash. Back one forward is probably the most common transition since it's quick, safe, and has a second hit for cover, but because of the cancel, you can loop it. And by doing that, you also give yourself access to your normal standing moves. It definitely takes some practice to get comfortable doing that while also trying to read your opponent, but it really opens the door of possibilities when it comes to pressure. First note that a lot of what we mentioned already can be good for crushing or keep out as well. Forward 4 is great, as is her crouch dash. Simply doing CD feints at range can really make people second guess. Otherwise, her block and whiff punishing is really solid. 2-4 is an above average jab punish and gets really scary near the wall since it splats. She has a very fast mid punisher with 1 plus 2 as well as a rangier option in forward 2-3. That should be all you need until you have enough time to use either up forward 3 or down forward 2 to start your launching. From crouch, very very standard options with while standing four, while standing one, two, and then again your launch option of up forward three. You do also have while standing two, which definitely has more range than up forward three, but it's just a tad slower. For general counter hit tools, she does have a magic four combo with four one, which simply means it's a safe, quick counter hit launch. She does have to commit to the string, which makes hers a little riskier, but still exceptionally good. Forward four makes another appearance here as well, since it launches on counter hit. Up four is very good as well, and doubles as a low crush. In fact, crushing is really her strong suit. You have up forward three, of course, but down forward three plus four and forward forward three are both jumping mid launchers. A bit gimmicky, but up three plus four fits that too. For high crushes, aside from just pokes, down back three is really strong, safe on block, homing, and launches on counter hit. Forward three also launches on counter hit two if you want another anti-step tool. We mentioned full crouch down forward three, and then there's also some riskier stuff with down back four, down back three plus four, and down three plus four. Down three plus four is a pretty infamous panic tool since it's so quick and can beat highs and sometimes even mids. It's just very risky on block. And then lastly, forward forward two, a very scary armor move. Incredibly unsafe, but one of the rare armored launchers in the game. And it's mid, so although you take some block risk, showing this every once in a while goes a long way. She does have another armored move with down one plus two, which is a bit safer, but lower reward. And then to close out defense, her movement deserves some quick mention too. Nothing fancy, but her sidestep is one of the best in the game, and she has a little jump away tool, which can be done from back turn as well. Movement is incredibly important in Tekken, and strong sidesteps tend to shine exceptionally well, so keep that in mind always. Okay, so a few quick various topics to end things. First, let's talk tracking. Her tracking on normal tools is actually pretty weak, but she has a ton of homing moves to make up for that. Some we mentioned, but they are forward three, down back three, down back four, forward one plus two, CD two, CD three plus four, and back turn down three plus four. Each has their own strengths and weaknesses, so play around with them to get a feel for it. For example, CD three plus four and forward forward one plus two are probably best on approach, although CD three plus four is so fast that you can use it almost anywhere, whereas forward three is more of a close range tool. Regardless, she really has to rely on these to make up for her poor tracking on her normal tools. Second, Lily has a lot of gimmicks so it's worth to throw out as much as you can to see what sticks. This will of course fail as an overall strategy against strong defensive players or those who know the matchup well, but you can get some real value. Generally, we're talking about strings. So the standing three string options, the forward three plus four string options, down to two, both up three and up forward three plus four, and so on. 
Down forward 4-4 four four is a common starting place because it's a chunky combo if it hits, but if they block or parry the second hit, then it's a good chance that they know a little bit about Lily. If they don't, though, these strings can do tons of damage. Otherwise, note her Rage Drive, which is just a better version of her down forward 3 plus 4. She doesn't have a grab game, as we mentioned, so you can skip those unless, as usual, they're just not breaking them. Similarly, we won't go over juggles in detail, but check out the video description below for a link to some standard combos. This brings us to the end of the primer. I'm hoping this information was succinct and helpful for getting a jump on the character, but feedback is always welcome. Be mindful that in-depth discussion for game plans and move attributes will be saved for intermediate guides, although since we have the more robust basics guides already for Tekken 7, true intermediate guides will be something to look out for with Tekken 8. Lastly, big thanks to our patrons. You guys are the best and that support means more than you know. But to everyone, stay safe and we'll see you next time.